So students, today we'll be starting with chapter 38, which is enteric fever. In this chapter, we will review the classification and nomenclature, antigenic structure and typhoidal salmonella. So starting with enteric fever, it is a potentially fatal multisystem illness caused by salmonella typhi, which causes typhoid fever and salmonella paratyphi A and B and C, which cause paratyphoid fever. Classification and nomenclature, salmonella is a gram-negative bacterium belongs to family Enterobacteriaceae. The credit of discovery of salmonella goes to Salmon and Smith, 1885. The most important serotype of salmonella, S. typhi, for this was observed by Eberth, 1880 and Gafiki, 1884 and hence was formally called Eberth Gafiki bacillus or Eberthella typhi. Salmonella is an antigenically complex. The classification and nomenclature of salmonella have undergone several modifications over the past few years. There are several classifications proposed so far. The clinical classification. It is the oldest user-friendly classification which is still widely used. It divides salmonella into two groups. Typhoidal salmonella and non-typhoidal salmonella or NTS. The typhoidal salmonella include serotypes of S. typhi and S. paratyphi. They are restricted to human host in whom they cause enteric fever uh, which is typhoid or paratyphoid fever. The non-typhoidal salmonella or NTS uh, are, can colonize the intestine of a broad range of animals including mammals, reptiles, birds and insects. They also infect humans causing foodborne gastroenteritis and septicemia. Antigenic classification which is kaufman white scheme. The classification within the genus is based on the presence of different somatic O and flagellar H antigens which can be detected by agglutination with the respective antisera as we will see in the table. Uh, zero groups based on O antigen. The salmonella are classified into zero groups. There are 67 zero groups. Okay, the zero group uh, <coughs> uh, 2 yeah, uh, the as the number increase, the zero groups are uh, 1, 2, 3, 6, up to 67. The zero group 2, formerly zero group A, contains uh, zero group specific O antigen type 2. Zero group 4, formerly zero, zero group B, B, contains group specific O antigen type 4. And zero group 9, formerly zero group D, contains group specific O antigen type 9. In this table, we can see the, that uh, the new ones are 2, 4, 7, 9, earlier ones were A, B, C, 1 and this and uh, serotype name and O antigen present and the VI antigen and the H antigen phase 1 or phase 2 can be seen. So the serotypes, each zero group is further classified into serotypes based on the type of flagellar antigens present. Currently there are more than 2500 serotypes of salmonella. The molecular classification uh, based on DNA hybridization study, the genus salmonella consists of two species, salmonella entrica and salmonella Bongori. Within this species Salmonella entrica, there are six subspecies namely entrica, salami, arizone, di arizone, haunte and indica. Uh, each subspecies is further differentiated into serotypes based on O and H antigens as described in the kaufman white scheme table 30.1. Most of the pathogenic typhoidal and non-typhoidal Salmonella serotypes are placed under species entrica and subspecies entrica. Nomenclature Taxonomically, the correct nomenclature of the members of Salmonella is very much complicated. Example, Salmonella species, Entera subspecies, Entrica serotype, Typhi. Okay. However, the routine of Salm simplified format is followed where the genus and serotype names are included. For example, Salmonella serotype, while Typhi in short or as Typhi. Okay. Antigenic structure. Salmonella processes three important antigens on the cell wall based on which they are classified. The antigens are Somatic antigen O, flagellar antigen H, surface envelope antigen BI found in some species. The O and H antigen are described in table 30.2. So coming to the VI antigen. The VI antigen is a surface polysaccharide envelope or capsular antigen covering the O antigen. The naming is due to the belief that VI antigen is related to virulence. Okay. So it is expressed in only few serotypes such as S. typhi, S. paratyphi, S. Dublin and some strains of Cytobacter frondi, the Ballerup but theta group. As VI antigen is poorly immunogenic and antibody titers are low, it is not helpful in diagnosis of the cases. Okay, uh, this uh, it is believed that uh, uh, the VI antigen is poorly immunogenic. Okay, uh, uh, hence VI antigen is not employed in the Vidal test. However, it is believed that the complete absence of the VI antibody is a proven case of typhoid fever indicates poor prognosis. Okay. 
now uh, coming on to differences between O and H antigen okay so the O antigen is a part of the cell wall lipopolysaccharide while the H is made up of protein flagellin confers motility to the bacteria the Vidal test O antigen of S type is used in Vidal test H antigen of S type and S para type A and B are used O is less immunogenic H is more immunogenic O antibody appears early this appears early indicates recent infections H antibody appears late, disappears late, indicates convalescent stage. When O antigen reacts with O antibody, forms a compact granular chalky clumps, agglutination takes place slowly. Optimum temperature for agglutination is 55 degrees Celsius. When H antigen reacts with H antibody, it forms large loose fluffy clumps. Agglutination takes place rapidly. Optimum temperature for agglutination is 37 degrees Celsius. Zero grouping of salmonella is based on O antigen. Zero groups of are differentiated into zero types based on H antigen. Okay, so coming back to VI antibody, the VI antibody usually disappears in early convalescence, but if persist, indicates the development of carrier state. Okay, uh, the VI, the phage typing of S type can be done by using VI specific bacteriophages, and VI antigens can also be used for vaccination. So starting on with typhoidal salmonella. Typhoidal salmonella includes S. typhi and S. para typhi A, B and C which cause enteric fever. Non-typhoidal salmonella cause mainly gastrointestinal manifestations and have been discussed in chapter 41. Pathogenesis. Salmonella are transmitted by oral route through ingestion of contaminated food or water. Infected dose of salmonella is higher than that of Sigella. Minimum 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 6 bacilli are needed to initiate the infections. Risk factor that promote transmission include the conditions that decrease stomach acidity less than one year age, antacid ingestion or achloridia or prior helicobacter pylori infection, intestinal integrity, inflammatory bowel disease, prior GIT surgery or suppression of the intestinal flora by antibiotics. Entry through epithelial cells or M cells lining the intestinal mucosa. Salmonella can trigger the formation of membrane ruffles on the cell membrane of M cells. These ruffles reach out and enclose the adherent bacteria within the large vesicles. Now, this process of uptake of bacteria is called bacteria mediated endocytosis (PME), which is mediated by a specialized type 3 secretion system. Following entry, the bacilli remain inside the vacuoles in the cytoplasm. Entry into the macrophages. Salmonella containing vacuoles cross the epithelial layer to reach the submucosa where they are phagocytosed by the macrophages. Survival inside the macrophages. H. typhi induces certain alteration on its surface in lipopolysaccharide so that it is no longer susceptible to the lysosomal enzyme of macrophages. Primary bacteremia. Salmonella contained inside the macrophages spread via the lymphatics to enter the bloodstream transient primary bacteremia. The spread then the bacilli disseminate throughout the reticular endothelial tissues, liver, spleen and lymph nodes and bone marrow and other organs such as gallbladder, kidneys and lungs where further multiplication takes place. Secondly, bacteria occurs from the seeded organs which leads to onset of a clinical disease. Clinical manifestations of enteric fever are as follows. Incubation period is about 10 to 14 days. Enteric fever is named after the mode of transmission enteric root of its causative agent. However, the manifestations seen are largely extraintestinal. Fever, step ladder pattern of remittent fever, fever rises gradually to a higher level with every spike, then falls down but does not, but does not touch normal. Other symptoms, headache, chills, cough, sweating, myalgia and arthralgia, rashes called rose spots, faint salmon colored blanching, maculopapular rash on the trunk and chest seen in 30% of the patients at the end of first week. Early intestinal manifestations such as abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting and anorexia. Important signs include hepatosplenomegaly, epistaxis and relative bradycardia. Complications, gastrointestinal bleeding and intestinal perforation can occur mostly in the third and fourth week of illness. Neurologic manifestations occur rarely which include meningitis, cerebellar ataxia or neuropsychiatric symptoms described as muttering delirium or coma vigil such as paranoid psychosis, hysteria, delirium, and aggressive behavior. The epidemiology host. Humans are the only natural source host for typhoidal salmonella. Transmission. It is transmitted by the ingestion of contaminated water and food. Prevalence. As per WHO, the estimated 11 to 21 million cases of typhoid fever with 1.2 to 1.6 lakh deaths occur annually worldwide compared to 6 million cases of paratyphoid fever with 54,000 deaths annually. India bears the major brunt of this disease, which estimated more than 6 million cases annually. 
incidence varies between the countries highest more than 100 cases per 1 lakh population per year in south central and southeast asia medium 10 to 100 cases per 1 lakh in the rest of asia africa latin america low less than 100 to less than 10 cases per 1 lakh in other parts of the world Locality and age. Enteric fever is more common in urban than rural areas, more common among young children and adolescents than in adults. Factors that favor transmission include poor sanitation and improper cleaning of drinking water, contaminated water, food and drinks, lack of hand washing and toilet access, evidence of prior Helicobacter pylori infection, Typhi versus paratyphi. S. Typhi infection is more common than S. paratyphi. Ratio is 4 is to 1. However, S. paratyphi A appears to be increasing, especially in India, maybe due to the increasing vaccination of S. typhi. Now, is the carriage untreated patients can become carrier and secrete or excrete S. typhi in feces or urine. Carriers are of two types: uh, fecal carriers and uh, Urinary carriers. Fecal carriers, typhoid bacilli multiply in the gallbladder and are excreted in the feces. Fecal carriers are more common. Urinary carriers, multiplication takes place in the kidneys and bacilli excreted in the urine. Urinary carriers are rare. Duration of shedding. Carriers continue to shed the bacilli in the feces and urine for temporary carriers. Shed S. typhi in the feces for up to 3 months. Up to 10% of untreated patients excrete S. typhi. Chronic carriers, they shed S. typhi in, in either urine or stool for more than one year, seen up to 2 to 5 percent of patients. Chronic carriers, it occurs in about 1 to 4 percent of infected people. Chronic carriage is more common in women, infants, and old age. Biliary tract abnormalities, which lead to increased fecal excretion. Salmonella form biofilms on the gallstones, and chronic carriage is associated with an increased risk of gallbladder cancer. Abnormalities of the urinary tract and associated schistosoma hematobium infection of the bladder leads to increased urinary excretion. Food, food handlers or cooks who become chronic carriers are particularly dangerous can excrete the bacilli for many years. The best known example of such typhoid carrier was Mary Malone, typhoid Mary, a New York cook who gave rise to more than 1300 cases during her lifetime during causing several outbreaks. Laboratory diagnosis. Uh, this we'll see uh, later also, but let's discuss in a uh, short. So in lab diagnosis, we have to do the specimen collection first. Uh, blood or bone marrow culture, first week of illness, serum for serology, second or third week of illness, and urine and stool culture, third or fourth week of illness. Then we do culture isolation. Blood and bone marrow culture in first week of illness. Uh, conventional is BHI, broth or agar. Automated blood culture system are Bactec or BACT or alert. Stool culture in 3-4 weeks of illness, enrichment broth such as selenine, F-broth, tetrathionate broth and gram-negative broth. Low selective medium is McConkey agar, translucent NLF colonies. Okay. And uh, high selective media, DCA, XLD agar and wilson bears bismuth, bismuth sulfite medium. Okay. Now urine culture, 3-4 to four weeks of illness on McConkey agar. Culture smear and motility, motile gram-negative bacilli. Okay. Identification uh, is done by the catalase positive and oxidase negative or ICUT indole negative, citrate positive negative, UTAs negative, TSI K slash A gas positive, except in S typhi, H2S, S typhi, small spec, S paratyphi A absent, S paratyphi B abundant. So we can do the identification like this. Or by or automated systems can be used like Mildred of or Vitex. Slide agglutination test to confirm the serotype and the serum antibody detection is by Vidal test 2 to 3 weeks of illness antibodies are detected against TO, TH, AH and BH antigens in S type infection uh, TO and TH antibodies increase in S paratyphi infection uh, TO and AH antibodies increase in S paratyphi B infection TO and BH antibodies increase. Okay. Uh, in, so in result and uh, interpretation, O antibodies produce granular chalky clumps when react with O antigen. H antibody produce cotton bully clumps when react with H antigen. Antigen detection uh, uh, serum and urine by ELISA. Molecular method PCR detecting flagellin gene, IRO B and flick gene. Okay. Non-specific findings for our example are neutropenia and antimicrobial susceptibility testing can be done. You will see the lab diagnosis in detail in the next video. Okay, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching.